Hi everybody, welcome to this uh, short tutorial video uh, for number 40, a multiple choice question from the 2016 exam. I chose this because only 36% of students worldwide got this question right, so there's something tricky about this. We'll see if we can uh, sort it out. And actually the first few times I read through this and tried to, to pick uh, one of the four answers here, I actually got tripped up as well. So I might trip up when I'm explaining it to you here, so I'll try to be as quick and concise and as not confusing as I can. So the, the lead in here is actually kind of scary for a lot of people. There's just a lot of stuff. Stuff. It's like blah, 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 signaling proteins, blah, 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 a bacteria and humans have this. And then it asks, finally kind of gets to the question on the bottom. But, but don't be scared. You know, read, read through this as carefully as you can. Um, and then try to pick out really what are they asking you. Um, luckily, they kind of have that right down here at the bottom. So um, this is talking about these uh, enzymes. They're calling proteolytic enzymes that break down uh, molecules, pro other proteins that are on the cell surface. And once those proteins are broken down into, let's just say, two pieces, it's those two pieces that are actually used in the cell communication from one cell to another. And so that seems kind of complex, but I guess you could uh, um, understand that pretty well uh, if you are an AP Biology student. Um, but again, they eventually get down to here uh, where they ask the question, and it's an evolution question. Which of the following questions would be most appropriate to investigate whether the proteolytic enzymes are evolutionarily conserved among species? Um, being conserved in evolutionary terms means that all or a lot of species share the trait, or in this case, the, the production of the enzyme, and, and really it's the function of that enzyme. Do they have the enzyme, and is the function that, they, that it serves in all those species the same? Um, and we know we have a lot of examples of these. Um, cell respiration enzymes are, are highly conserved among most organisms, for example. Uh, so not only are they found in all organisms, but they're used um, in the same way in all of those organisms. So let's consider A, B, C, and D here. A says, are the genes encoding the proteolytic enzymes expressed in the same cell types in all species. And at first glance, that seems okay. That's, that's almost the definition of what being evolutionarily conserved means. So let's, let's, let's uh, keep that as a possible answer as we move forward here. Letter B says, once the precursor proteins of different species are cleaved, um, do the signaling proteins bind the same receptors on different target cells? Well, here they're talking about the precursor proteins, but up here they're talking about the proteolytic enzymes. And, and, and those are the two pieces that we're dealing with in this question. There's the enzyme, and then there's the products of that enzymatic reaction. B is talking about the products of that enzymatic reaction being conserved, not the enzyme being conserved. So we have to cross off B as a potential answer. So let's go to C. If a proteolytic enzyme from one species is incubated with a precursor protein from another species, does correct cleavage occur? This sounds really interesting. If you took the enzyme, which you think is conserved, and you incubated or simply put it in uh, a situation where it's going to get a hold of that precursor protein, which is its substrate, from another species, would the two interact as they're supposed to in both of their normal environments? And if they did, then that would mean that they were conserved. Um, and if they didn't, then that would mean that they're not conserved. So um, this seems like a pretty good question to ask and a pretty good um, uh, investigation to do. So again, C is pretty good. And again, we're still dealing with A as a potential answer as well. Letter D says, are the proteolytic enzymes synthesized in the rough endoplasmic reticulum of all species? Well, if we knew that this was an enzyme that was synthesized in the ER, well, maybe, but not all enzymes are, and in fact, not all proteins are. A lot of them are simply synthesized in uh, or at ribosomes that are just free-floating in the cytoplasm. So, uh, of course, the ER is a place of protein synthesis, but not necessarily of all proteins or all enzymes. So D, we're throwing away. B, we're definitely throwing away, and we're left with A and C, and it turns out um, that C is our right answer, um, that uh, if we take the enzyme from one species and actually mix it with the other other part of the reaction from another species, do both those things recognize each other, and do they act um, as if they are conserved, they have the same function with each other, and that just seems like a great uh, investigation to do. Um, and again, I'm not quite sure exactly why this one is like totally not the right answer, um, uh, because it seems pretty good. This one's just a little bit better, and sometimes in the AP questions, you just got to go with the one that just, you know, your gut says, man, that's a good question, to, or that's a good answer there, um, even though that one still seems okay. So maybe that's a, that's a a tactic for you AP bio folks um, when you get two answers that uh, you're still like toggling between you know pick that one that just really seems like the best answer so that's number 40 uh, from the 2016 exam